Live. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, so today, Jack and I are going to be watching Diamonds Are Forever, starring it's Sean Connery, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and we're doing like a dual stream kind of because I'm streaming here on YouTube, and Jack, where are you streaming? I'm live on Twitch right now. Fantastic. So you're going to count us down. Uh, if you want to join us, we're watching the 4K version on Amazon Prime. Don't watch just the 1080p version. The 4K version's better. Yeah, yeah. So we're uh, we're at five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Oh wait, just kidding. <laughs> five. Are you just kidding? Four, three. Wait. Two, one. Wait. Do that again. Do that again. Three. Two, one. All right, we there. You seeing the lion? I'm seeing Pierce Brosnan come across the screen. Oh my gosh! Or uh, Sean Connery. <laughs> We're on the oh, wrong I'm stuff. Seeing, I'm seeing United Artists logo. <laughs> Are you really, are you like 30 seconds ahead of me? I think so. A guy just got thrown through the. Oh table. yeah. You're way ahead of me. Are you not getting like the, the lion's eye at the beginning? <laughs> I did. I already went through it. Oh no. We got to start over. Yeah. I think we got to start over. So I'm, I'm right at zero. It's paused. It's at zero. Uh, it won't. Okay. You're paused right at zero? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So uh, this is the lion zero. Is that right? Well, it's like it zooms in out of his or zooms out of his eye. You know, I think this is actually going to be helpful for the viewers at home because it'll give them <laughs> a little bit of time to kind of get themselves coordinated to be able to start from the zero. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also... It's the countdown, and then we you're doing one and then go. Sometimes that can confuse people. Okay. All right, I'm ready when you are. I'm ready. Count us down. <laughs> Three, two one go right now you're seeing the zoom out of the eye right yeah okay i hear i hear the lime the lion roaring right now start dark side of the moon right here <laughs> okay perfect <laughs> and now the united artists logo And now the camera lens going across the screen. And you really and here's threw, our boy, Sean. Yeah, you really threw me off when you said Pierce, who I like, but I was like, that can't be right. No, nah, it can't be right. So for those keeping score at home, I'm no longer live on Twitch. Okay. <laughs> Technically, this is um, unlisted on YouTube. And if it... If we're happy with the results, I'll put it up later. <laughs> okay, great. We're living in a real low pressure environment. So to an extent, this is kind of like a celebration of Sean Connery's life, what we're doing here now. Yeah, that was my thinking with it. You know, this is the, uh, I don't know how much you're into like the lore of the production of the Bond series, mm -hmm. but they actually let Sean Connery go. They wouldn't pay him what he wanted to be paid, brought in a different Bond. Everyone hated that Bond, so they dumped him. And so this is Sean Connery coming back as bond actually yeah not for the last time either he'll come back again because in terms of production trivia i do like some of that because part of it's like what was it thunderball or whatever there was still like 
uh, an exception to the right. So they remade it as Never Say Never Again. Right, right. Another production company. Yeah, there's the Eon Productions and then the other productions. Yeah. And then this is Blofeld, who's with Spectre and is portrayed by a bunch of different actors. Probably everyone's favorite Blofeld is from Goldfinger. That's two Bond films before this. Mm -hmm. But the, the one that kind of directly precedes this Sean Connery Bond. Sean Connery's looking older here, but he's still, you know, what is he, 50s here? Uh, yeah, I mean, he was like Miss, Mr. Universe or a runner-up in Mr. Universe way back before this. So he's always, you know, been healthy. Sure. And, you know, to be honest... I've never seen this. My bond watching is very spotty. I've probably seen about half of them all together. Yeah. Okay. I've never seen this one. Well, I think that all that stuff about this being sort of Sean Connery being brought back as bond, you know, the continuation of Goldfinger. I, I think that's all relevant. Goldfinger is obviously, you know, the one where the laser almost chops off his unit it's you know maybe the most outlandish and so yeah. this is sort of a a continuation of maybe the more maybe the more cartoonish bonds yeah certainly not uh going in the other direction it's definitely not serious i can tell already You know, I think there's people who maintain that Roger Moore might be the best Bond. I don't know what I think about that theory. I'm asking you, what do you think about this theory? You know, for me, it's interesting because I'm from a generation that really grew up with Pierce Brosnan being Bond. Mm -hmm. And I had a depth of familiarity with the series as a whole, mostly from the video game. You know, you probably played a lot of the famous nintendo 64 goldeneye video game yeah yeah absolutely well one of the things that was so cool about that video game you know everybody remembers odd job obviously who's from goldfinger but that game is not only filled with characters but also with kind of iconic scenes you know the moonraker laser and, and all these different pieces of the bond franchise as a whole Hey, diamonds are forever. Here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is uh, yeah. Uh, so, so, so I, I, I kind of loved a lot of Bond through the video game first, but it was always Pierce Brosnan for me. So Pierce Brosnan is kind of my top Bond because he really defined who Bond is for me. And then I think after that, in general, people seem to consider both Roger Moore and Sean Connery to be true icons as Bond. I know Pierce Brosnan has a lot of respect for both of them. And mm -hmm. it seems as though to me in the modern era, we've got, you know, four bonds that are all really great. And you can kind of pick which bond is for you, maybe based on where and when you encountered bond. So that's kind of the way I see it. I'm, I'm going Pierce one, Sean two, and then Roger Moore for me is three ahead of uh, our most recent Dan Craig. What about you? Yeah, I guess just to be contrary, I'm going to say Roger Moore is my favorite now. Uh, I like, I actually like him more for like having a sense of humor. I think they all have, you know, their own different types of sense of humor, but I think Roger Moore is the funniest. He's like the most like nudge, yeah. nudge, wink, wink about being James Bond, I think. And I enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, Connery is definitely humorous throughout, but there's a kind of, I don't know, it's almost a postmodern humor that definitely is more present in the Roger Moore work. And I guess that's also because Roger Moore is working with a larger context of, of brand, so mm -hmm. to say. Yeah. So it's harder not to 
be self-aware about this thing that, you know, Dr. No, yeah, it's a famous series of novels. There's a comic strip or maybe the comic strip was after. I don't really know. But, you know, James Bond isn't this bulk of ideas, whereas today, you know, James Bond means all these things. He's all these different iterations. So how can you not be kind of referential with it? Mm -hmm. Do you think that James Bond movies are mostly for super fans or are they mostly kind of the epitome of a pop entertainment? Because on the one hand, they offer so many rich rewards for people that are deeply familiar with the entire, you know, film and novel, you know, universe. But on the other hand, they're kind of the ultimate contemporary entertainment. They're funny, they're romantic, they're exotic, lots of great gadgets and glamorous scenes. You know, mm -hmm. they're kind of the ultimate capture of what's cool and fun and interesting right now. Yeah, it's, uh, there's something for everyone. I think ultimately it's pop entertainment, uh, although they make efforts every once in a while, like Casino Royale, I think was the big example of this, where they're like, not necessarily that they're trying to go back to their roots, but they're, you know, Casino Royale after, what was it, Die Another Day, was like, we, re we want it to be more realistic, less ridiculous, and, you know, not just, because it's such a formula, like the James Bond series for half a century is like, okay, it's a winning formula. Don't change the formula too much. Yeah. Uh, but certainly like I, I'm going to lean towards pop entertainment. Uh, but it's also, you know, it's popular enough that you're going to have it super fans. I mean, James Bond is up there. Like the most popular 20th century characters in this vein are probably Bond, Sherlock Holmes and Batman. I think you're way wrong about that. That's oh, yeah. insane to put <laughs> Sherlock Holmes in the conversation with Bond and Batman. I think that's nuts. But speaking of the conventions, this is one of the great Bond conventions. You know, we get an opening action scene and then we get some sort of headquarters, bureaucracy, politicking. Obviously, the first one, iconically, they give him the PPK. They, they tell him to ditch the Smith & Wesson. Oh, that's here? This is officially No, no, here? no, no, that's Dr. No. Oh, okay. Uh, but my point is, the, these scenes have a unique role in the Bond universe. Yeah. But they're also, I mean, again, it's like part of a formula where you can kind of, I bet you could do like a supercut of the Bond films, and they all just kind of proceed the same way. Like, there's this, there's the scene with Q. I mean, we already passed the opening uh, intro song, and... Even though you disagree with the Sherlock Holmes comparison, like both Holmes and Batman are a lot more varied, I think, in like the types of films they make for those characters. They're really all over the map, but like Bond is like, they hit it early. So you haven't seen this. This is the exposition of the movie. Do you, oh, okay. are you following what's going on here? Oh, no, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, you're going to want to pay attention to this. Okay. This is basically all of the info for the rest of the film. <laughs> all right so if you if you caught that they're yeah. like hey what's going on what do you know about diamonds like oh i know a little bit we got this diamond mine they're smuggling diamonds out this is kind of the original uh blood diamond movie plot i suppose and at the end of the day what we're going to be trying to solve with bond is is this diamond thing about more than just precious jewels yeah so, and um, the famed Blofeld is behind behind the plot, as we saw right. at the beginning. Now, this whole thing, this is like an old movie trick, right? Where this is supposed to be at night, but they've just thrown a filter over the camera. Yeah, 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 that's good. And these two assassins are, I think, in a couple of movies, or maybe I'm just recalling them from this film, but I seem to recall them uh, showing up before. Mm-hmm.
What do you make of the Diamonds Are Forever song? It's all right. Is it Bassy or Basie? I don't know. Shirley Bassy. I, th- I want to okay. say. Okay. Uh, I really don't know. I only know the song. I don't know any of her other work. I think I mostly know her from James Bond themes. I think she's done more than one. Oh, okay. Uh, and also either James Bond themes or like other samples from her got heavily used in like Chicago house music of the eighties and early nineties. So I have like some passing familiarity based on sort of the repurposing of her work. Sure. Sure. And then, you know, famously Kanye West, who before he was borrowing from French house on albums like Yeezus is borrowing from Chicago House early in his career when he samples Diamonds Are Forever. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So she's got a great voice. You got to give her that. Great voice. And Diamonds Are Forever, I, you know, for me, it's one of the better songs. I'm putting it right up there with Skyfeld, Skyfall. What do you make of these guys holding hands? I've never <laughs> noticed that before. Never but noticed. Are they gay? Why would they hold hands walking off together? Uh, you know, it depends on who you ask. Some people say it's a cultural thing. I mean, where were they? South Africa? I don't know if it's part of that I, culture specifically. I think they're European. Okay. What kind of payment do you think you'd require to have your tooth hollowed out and smuggle a diamond in the hole that is in one of your molars? Oh man. I don't, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm comfortable enough. Like I'm not looking for any side projects, Okay. but you know, it's like, if you're trying to get, it's like in terms of that metaphorical ladder, if you're trying to get just on the first rung of the economic ladder, then you'll do anything. Right. I, I guess so. You know, for me, the dental work is really a, a serious obstacle in the already not super appealing world of smuggling diamonds. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm going to smuggle diamonds, I don't want a root canal added into the equation. Yeah. Oh, are we going to get to go to Amsterdam? Uh, yeah, briefly. Um, I like that they're dipping into the problematic colonialist relationship between the Dutch and the South Africans. Oh, that's yeah. Kind of, that's kind of bold. I like that. You know, this is this is the 60s, man. This is way ahead of apartheid. Mm-hmm. Is this 69? What year is this? Yeah, I guess yeah. That, that that's another continuing theme with the Bond films, though, is sort of the exploitation of less developed nations i think that's a recurring theme yeah you're right that's it that's a unique polemic it's 71 is when this comes out december 17th 71 yeah and and the movie release poster is just iconic boy is it brilliant so is this a double entendre i mean i get the i guess the tulip reference is that what was it the uh the speculation the tulip mania i i don't know if that was a double entendre that was a pretty specific pull by you maybe (laughs) Well, I just, you know, I was already on the path of thinking about diamonds as like, it's a not precious resource that there's been, you know, sort of a monopolization on for a century plus now. But it's just pressurized carbon. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, maybe I'm reading too much into it. Yeah, I I do like, though, that the fake diamonds are really stigmatized, you know? Mm -hmm. When I was doing engagement ring shopping... (laughs) Yeah. I was kind of blown away at how impossible it was 
really for even very trained eyes to tell the difference between good diamonds and really good diamonds. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to talk about kind of like made up value, this thing that you're sort of seeing flash around as someone gestures with their hands, but actually to tell the real value, you need this super specific microscope and actually perfect lighting. Like, you know, I don't know. What's the point in the extra, you know, times three or times four? Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, don't ask me. I'm I'm morally opposed to it. Yeah, that's, that's right. always the argument I bring up: the blood diamond situation. Yeah, yeah. Not just the exorbitant cost. Hey, you're you're the first guy to say TIA, man. This is Africa. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, one of the things that I love about Bond is all the interiors. Mm-hmm. I love all the different, there's sort of Baroque interior. Whoa, hello. They're sort of Baroque, even if they're not uh, super stylish and interesting. You know what I mean? There's just a lot. There's a lot of richness in every scene. Yeah, I do enjoy that. It's very aspirational. Yeah. It's the first HGTV. And, you know, personally, I can never get more than one of these bottles at a time. I never. I can never manage to stack them up. Well, I think that there's only one bottle or two of liquor there. And I think we've got maybe some uh, tomato juice. She, she looks a like when he Alyssa came Milano. Oh, well, that was that was sad for me to hear. But <laughs> um, yeah, she's got a light Alyssa Milano thing. You know, I I'm a big Jill St. John fan personally. Yeah. Okay. So that's who this is. I wasn't, I'm not super familiar with her. That's who this is. I watched this movie recently with, uh, with my wife and we were commenting on the smallness of her underwear. And we had just watched alien Mm -hmm. and Sigourney Weaver also went for like, like a style of panty that seemed to be too small. Like they're like a pair of trunks, but they're too tiny. Right. Like it seemed uncomfortable to me. I, I totally get that reference. I'm very familiar with that scene from Alien for sure. Yeah, uh, you're, you're like, hey, Ripley, these don't seem to cover your butt in any direction. Yeah, it What's was just the on? it was just the style of the time. It was the mode. I guess. I guess so. I love the uh, sort of subtle recall of the theme, the light piano of Diamonds Are Forever. Mm -hmm. This is very gadget heavy. You know, you watch some of the earlier Bonds and there's so few of these kinds of fun little uh, gadgets being utilized. Mm -hmm. And it's because the production budgets go up so much. You know, I don't remember all the statistics, but... I think like Goldfinger, for example, you know, they made for like less than $10 million and it made 50 million, you know, $50 million in that era. You know, what they were able to do with these movies, sort of seeing them as investments is really interesting. And we start to get more stuff like the fingerprint machine. Where else would I know Jill St. John from? Boy, that's a great question. I'm not sure where you'd know her from. Um, I think a lot of these Bond girls were just sort of hotties that were kind of in and out of mediocre movies. Mm -hmm. And so that might be Jill St. John's uh, track. Lana Wood is the other Bond girl in this movie. And Lana Wood is in other stuff. Not stuff that I'm familiar with, but... A little bit after this, you know, with the Roger Moore version, uh, Live and Let Die. I just remember, like, it's got an early Jane Seymour, and she's she's great. She went on to do great things, too. Yeah, Jane Seymour's great. I don't know. I just looked up Jill St. John, but I didn't see anything I recognized. You, you could maybe scope it out for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Lana Wood is famous maybe for marrying somebody. <laughs> Oh, uh, 
She's Natalie Wood's sister. That's why she's famous. Okay. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what a gag. I love Peter Franks. You know, when uh, Sean Connery passed away the last couple of weeks, my mom said she was sad and she was even more sad to hear some complicated things about, you know, oh, yeah. his treatment of women. And I was like, wait, you're just finding out about this? Did you notice at the beginning of the fight when he cocked back to throw the punch, he broke a window with his elbow before <laughs> ever engaging in the fight? That's a tough way to start the fight with breaking the window. Yeah. With your elbow. What do you think your mom's continuing relationship with uh, Sir Sean is going to be following the revelations that, you know, for him, sometimes if a woman's being unreasonable or hysterical, you got to smack her with yeah, an open I hand. I mean, my first question is like, who was saying that? Like he died and then that was like someone's first thought. And it was like, it must have been in some mass media presentation. Like they said it on the Today Show or something. For, I really don't know. For my mom to be aware of it. Like, that was what she heard after he died. Just so strange. But uh, it'll probably, I mean, it'll just complicate things for her. Like, she'll just, you know, if we say, hey, let's put on uh, uh, the great train robbery. She'll be like, oh, I don't know. I mean, it's just not, a, it's not a good look. Nah, not a good look. But, you know, I think uh, I think people can can read some of the reporting and, and judge for themselves. On the whole, I think it's fair to say Sean Connery ne never did anything to women, uh, at least that we know about, nearly as terrible as what James Bond did to many yeah, women right. in most of the movies. Um, so, you know, the character Bond is pretty much just straight up abusive and yeah which is something like when we get to um this last guy daniel craig that it becomes more like you know about the history of like oh it's he had a bad upbringing right they don't really touch on that for the first what 20 movies right yeah i gotta say for the first 40 years of bond they dealt a lot less with the way that his past traumas impact his current behavior and psyche <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but you know, that was all of us. That was all of us. We were all thinking a lot less about our past traumas. You know, when I see a woman, uh, like this, I think, you know, what, what traumas did you endure to become a double agent of sorts? <laughs> she pulled out his playboy club. That's right. Membership card. That's right. Yeah. That's what he's always got on him. Yeah. That's this some is, interesting cross promotion. <laughs> this is before Visa was everywhere you want to be. Yeah. That's really, you know, that's a, a moment that's over now too, right? The whole, I mean, the Playboy Club is gone. It's, it's right. Is it gone? I assume. Boy, I really don't know. To be honest with you, uh, I think they brought some of them back and they were going to do like a, a Playboy airline. I don't know. They even I, but even if it was here, it would be like a slightly raunchier Planet Hollywood. Like I would just yeah. have no interest. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I was thinking recently about the settings that would make more sense for like an attractive waitress than a wing joint. Because <laughs> really, like pigging out on wings and fries and beer. That's not like the most dapper look for a fella. There's a reason girls are into James Bond. He's in a suit. He <laughs> drinks a nice glass martini. You know, like there's a vibe. If, if he's if he's chowing down, it's going to be on, you know, a good steak or something. He's not going, you know, third round on all you can eat boneless wings. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I was thinking about how odd Hooters is 
that that's the environment. I was thinking about other things that made made more sense. And really, the the sexy flight attendant makes a lot more sense than the sexy wing waitress. Mm-hmm. But you know, unfortunately, what with this year, uh, the whole flight attendant operation's been in dire straits too. This is true. This is true. So here's another uh, recurring character with different actors. That's right. That's right. The famous CIA counterpart, Felix Leiter. Mm -hmm. Who I didn't really, he didn't really stick with me. I may have seen him first when he showed up in the Daniel Craig Casino Royale with, um, I forget the actor's name, but you know, he's also in Westworld and a bunch of other Warner's projects. And Jeffrey. I liked him. I like that actor too. I think he does Jeffrey, great work. Jeffrey something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny because um, again, like just thinking about the evolution of the series, when we catch Bond here, we're at a bit of a transition point. You know, Felix is in this movie. He doesn't play a super significant partner role, but in the novels, Felix is like a real counterpart with Bond. Mm-hmm. And then early in the films, they work together a little bit more, uh, a little bit more. And later in the movies, Bond becomes a little bit more of a lone gunman. Mm-hmm. But early on, Felix is kind of constantly there helping. And in fact, on some of the movies, it's Felix's operation that Bond is kind of co-opting, mm-hmm. you know, midstream. That's what happens in, uh, I think, even Goldeneye, if I'm not mistaken, when he gets down to uh, the Caribbean and he meets up with Felix on the plane and the convertible. Yeah. But typically he's, he's way less cool than Bond. He has less of oh, what yeah. women want. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, this is British fantasy that they're as good as the Americans and they're better in some ways, you know. Yeah, but we're, we're helping them out with it, right? Because these are for a good to a good degree, like American productions. I was not aware that that was the case, but I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, because it's it's the Broccoli's who are producing it. And I think Albert, they're Br- and I think they're British. Yeah. And then Harry Saltzman is British. Yeah. But it, it is for sure. And, you know, we got British actors too, but I'm just saying that in terms of the machinery, it's like Hollywood machinery putting these movies together. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it is largely financed by British people. Okay. And I think it's not shot in Hollywood. If I'm not mistaken, at least in the early days. Mm-hmm. By the way, do you know Albert Broccoli's uh, nickname? Cubby. Cubby. I think Cubby's a good name. I like Cubby. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Slumber Inc., the name of this funeral home, that's one of those really popular kind of in brands within this universe, you know? Yeah. Big big Bond fans love Slumber Inc., the fake funeral home. I just had another question about the nickname. Is that what you would call a bunch of broccoli? Is it a cub of broccoli? No, I don't think so. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out where is this? Albert, that? A, a nickname for Albert is Cubby. Mm. Okay, I don't simple know, as that. I don't know why this is, but like up until recently, they didn't make nicknames necessarily very connected to what your regular name was. So, mm-hmm. you know, the one that everyone knows the most, and it's easy for me, is, is Jack. And Jack is often a nickname for John or sometimes even James. You know, there's a lot of different variations, but... Mm-hmm. Basically, the Irish just take a name that's a J and then they call you Jack to change it up. (laughs) Um, Cubby is one of those. There's a few others. Um, You know, Dick from Richard. I don't know where that comes from, right? Yeah. Uh, What, Bob from Robert? That's a little clearer. It's a little clearer. I've always been appreciative. I like the fact that there's not much you can do with my name. I like just having the su- Evan. There are actually a lot of guys that go by Ev. I know a couple <laughs> of guys that like to be called Ev. I know this guy in town. But yeah, it's true. 
you can't even, you know, people can do Jack E. Sometimes people try that with me. Jack E, my boy, Jack E, you know, uh, Jack O, that's another one. Right. You can't really do Evan O, you know, Evan E, <laughs> you know, it doesn't really work. Yeah. I mean, you, you could try all these, but just in terms of like, if you see it printed on a piece of paper, like if you see Jonathan, it's like, who knows? Who knows? If you see Robert, who knows? There's like 12 different variations. So uh, Bond has been dispatched to Holland in search of smuggled South African diamonds. Mm-hmm. Uh, after Holland has ended up in Las Vegas with our friend uh, Tiffany Case and in Vegas with Miss Case, Mr. Leitner helped him smuggle the diamonds out of the body and then he was sort of captured by these two thugs, Mr. Went and Mr. Kid, and is now about to be incinerated And then they walk away, too, because it's like it's a sure thing. Yeah. I mean, this seems like a pretty sure thing for me. When, the, when I see this, I'm like, I don't really understand how Bond gets out of this. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, he's literally in the process of being cremated. What's the play here? This is like almost to me a trope now, but again, I ask this question about old movies sometimes. Was this unique at the time? Like this yes. sort of being in a casket and being incinerated. What a twist. But you know what it reminds me of is you saw the movie Scrooge with Bill Murray where there's a scene oh, yeah. like that. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously that's way after this. This is great because it makes the point that Bond is out thinking people. You can uh-huh. put him in a situation like this where he's in a coffin, he's being cremated. There's no way to escape. He's got no tools for escape. Mm-hmm. But he's mentally so far ahead that he doesn't need a tool to escape the coffin because he knows you're going to pull him out of the coffin. Yeah. Are we going to see Sammy Davis Jr.? I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. There could be some fun Vegas cameos in this. I really don't know. And when I saw it, I wasn't, you know, even looking for Vegas cameos. Mm-hmm. So is this Sean Connery's final outing? Do we replace it with Roger Moore right after this one? Yep. Okay. I believe so. Seems like this is about the same. You go to Vegas now, you're going to get a similar experience. I think that this does have a sort of fun time capsule vegas before aria you know i I like it do you feel like this is more or less classy than the vegas that we encountered I i mean i'm thinking equivalent it seems to me about the same it's like you know some of the the outfits of the fashion has changed but the overall aesthetic seems about the same to me Yeah, I think you're right. You know, I wonder almost if the Vegas casinos have in their aesthetic adapted a certain kind of European noble aesthetic. Mm -hmm. A lot of textures and fabrics. Everything's rich. Jerry Seinfeld? (laughs) it's such a bad haircut have we said that yet 
No, we haven't. We haven't commented on this guy's appearance. And I don't know how we missed it because holy hell, he looks like a human version of a cartoon walrus. <laughs> yeah. This is Lana Wood. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, she's very pretty. <laughs> well played, Bond. Look, some people don't think it'd be like that, but it do. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of tool named after your father, perhaps. That's a great gag. <laughs> we got a lot of ugly people in movies here. Not plenty, of course, but yeah, you know, that fella. Woo. Yeah. The lady next to James. So it'd be great if like Peter O'Toole showed up in a cameo as her father. That would. Hi, I'm Peter O'Toole. Classic legend of screen. This mm -hmm. is my daughter, Plenty. So no one has ever actually met Peter Franks before. Or is this a false identity completely? Was there a real one or is it a false identity? I believe it's a false identity completely. Okay. All right. That's a little more plausible than I suppose. And then he tried to trick Tiffany Case into thinking that he killed Bond early. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she almost seems surprised that it worked like she seemed more comfortable with this whole operation a couple minutes ago i think that she's just like really balling out of control here she's picked up <laughs> five grand you know he's good looking he's nice he's charming he's in a suite she was with that fat old poor guy before you know mm -hmm. this is she's got five grand she's up for anything is she going to walk out with the rest of the chips? Nah. Uh, a better fit for the underwear? I guess. Those looked baggy in a weird <laughs> way. They were see-through and baggy. I don't know what's going on with underwear. I guess like before that guy started Victoria's Secret, I didn't mm -hmm. understand. He defined my whole understanding of the aesthetic. Yeah. Oh, wow. Definitely a stunt butt. <laughs> That's my favorite joke in any of the movies. I oh, love really? that joke so much. I was waiting for it. When he throws her out the window and then Bond tells him it was a nice shot. And he's like, yeah, I didn't know there was a pool. <laughs> Also, plenty swimming from the pool, still angry. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm.
I gotta say, I think I'm missing less in 4K. <laughs> Is there still, I mean, it's nice that she's here, right? But is there still some degree of disappointment that Pliny is gone? From him? Probably. Now, did you catch that? Yeah. He was like, oh, I guess I'm going to die, but I get you before I die, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> She's the hearty breakfast for the condemned man, which is what I tried to write to my wife in a love note, but she didn't <laughs> seem to catch it. I said, you're the hearty breakfast for my condemned man. Uh, very romantic. Now, do you have hair that grows on that part of your shoulder and collarbone? I do not. I, I don't. And I feel like I'm fortunate. I don't feel like I'm less of a man that this is just sort of regular skin. He's really a her suit fella. Yeah. Is that uh, I mean, is that more of a trend, though? Is that where the direction everybody's going in? Yeah, I guess we're all trying to be less hairy these days. Obviously not me. But um, yeah, it might be Miss Case. Mm -hmm. The beginning of a wonderful relationship. I don't know. I wouldn't get too attached. No, I wouldn't think so. So this was, they closed this down in the last decade or so? Circa Circus? Yeah, or is it still going? I thought it was still going, but I honestly don't know. I've stayed there in the last decade, I think. Yeah. But they added on two big towers many years after this in the 70s. No, it's still an option. I just brought it up real quick. You can still, there you, go. you can stay there. That's a so, hell of a cuff. Look at the cuff on them. So you want to stay at Circus Circus next time we go? Yeah, for sure. It's a pretty dumpy casino, let me tell you. Yeah, well. So this is like, right, it, it's at the edge of the strip. The main not, strip. I mean, not anymore, really. The strip has kind of gone up even... Well, yeah, it's at the edge. It's on the yeah. north end. Now, I'll be right back. I'll let you man the ship for a moment. <laughs> all right, all right.
I'm going to stop trying to ruin this kid. This elephant playing the slots, it's kind of like the issue of the monkey taking the photograph. Who has the copyright in the photograph? Does the elephant keep the money? All right, this whole bit, I'm uh -oh. thinking there might be some some cultural consequences. Yeah, I, I walked in at the end of that. It didn't look great. I'm not going to lie. I didn't see the whole problematic sequence, but yeah. Before that, do you remember the kid uh, at the balloons, the water balloons, like complaining he gets the big prize? Oh, yeah, that was great. Which is so plausible, but he what a complain. jerk. What a yeah. what a punk of a little kid. Well, he doesn't really understand the the serious trouble he almost caused. Yeah. But it really was uh, a no fooling type situation. Yeah. No show. So what was it? It was a stuffed animal full of diamonds? That's right. Okay. I think I would be happy with this in terms of a setup. This is all I want. I just want to see a mountain from my pool. Again, I'm seeing a lot more in 4K. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. So is this plenty? Or is this someone else? Sadly, it's plenty. Is it really? Right? Just bad luck with water. I mean, even that, so that example in like his famous interview with Barbara Walters, is that what he's going to in his head is like, this is a justified moment. There's dead people. We need to look, we're trying to crack the case. Let's speed things along. I, I got to tell you, I think that that was a little more arbitrary, uh -huh. but I think that that is sort of representative of his attitude about the act which is not that it's a violent, traumatizing thing to do to a woman, mm -hmm. but that it's just a tool that sometimes you got to use, just like sometimes you got to spank a kid. And so I think that's really the problem. 
I don't think that he was abusing women like Chris Brown or anything. I think he just didn't really understand that it would be traumatizing and violent for a man to hit a woman. Yeah. So I don't know. She was fine. Right. I don't know about Sean Connery himself, but, you know, James Bond is not the type to get well in a relationship at all. So he's not going to be in an abusive relationship because he's just going to keep he's going to keep moving. Yeah. Look at that. Bill Cosby. Did you see Bill Cosby on the marquee? Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. My how times have changed. But the the other funny thing, you mentioned spanking kids. And I've been reading Quintilian. I think that's how you say it. Who's like a Roman orator. And he says no. So this is like, you know, a uh, hundred years after Christ around this area. And he's saying like, no, nope, you can't, you can't teach kids anything if you spank them. I think that's what some people think. I don't really know. I, I haven't made the choice yet. Uh-huh. I was spanked and I don't feel traumatized by it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. And you're a good orator. So it's like in terms of quintillion, you didn't lose anything. That's right. That's right. Honestly, I would get spanked a lot less had I not been such a strong orator. I would have. <laughs> uh, you know, if you can articulate a really cogent argument back, it's not ideal at nine, you know? Yeah, I understand that. Sometimes you got to smack that mouthy little nine-year-old bastard. <laughs> or at least that's what my parents found to be true. Uh-huh. And then if you got a you got a 13 or 14 year old that's real loquacious but also like you know a little bit rebellious a mm-hmm. little bit hyper vigilant it could really make your life difficult in terms of what he observes to be true about the world around him that point though they're too big to smack you can't really do much Mm -hmm. look at how empty vegas was back then that's so wild that was thing i was thinking that too i mean i don't know the whole i don't know the landscape very well so i don't know what would be there right now but i'd have to imagine it's more it's a lot more yeah i'm sure there's some fun trivia in terms of uh what is being shown here in Diamonds Are Forever, and then what you would find today if you went to some of these spots. Yeah. Is it time Although, to uh, send Bond back to Vegas in the ooh. 2020s? Well, Vegas might really like that, frankly. I think they could use it a, a helping hand. But what I was going to say is uh, the trope of Nevada being this place of secret – high-tech experimentation this is a trope that we're still living with today whether it's you know oh look at all these you know sort of bays of drone pilots operating out in nevada Mm -hmm. it's a kind of unique state reputation they've got in popular culture yeah but you know i also just think with the vegas thing it's not very it's very it's garish compared to bond like you know he's probably better off it, or at least he's like more consistently in his element if he's in like say Monaco. Yeah. Is that the one? Monaco's the one. Yeah, he goes to Monaco all the time. He loves Monaco. Yeah. I want to go to Monaco, but I want to go like Bond in a mm-hmm. tailored, in a tailored tux, luxury sports car, tens of thousands of dollars to roll around with at the tables. Yeah, it really seems like the best way to do that is on someone else's dime. Like not even with your personal wealth, but yes. you know as uh uh something that you have to do for international business. You know, I think I like James would like to do it on Mr. Franks's credit. Sure. This is one of the great gags.
so this is just an indicator yeah yeah he, and when that, he said he says shield and i'm like yeah no and, and that was i think bond's joke is i feel much safer with this <laughs> we're at a secret bad guy lair i'm sure this will help mm-hmm. which i guess then, just it goes to show that i've got a lot to learn about being cool in these situations because i would just make it a whole thing like this can't be a shield what are you talking about <laughs> Professor doctor seems excessive to me. As a professor and a doctor, <laughs> is that not the title that you use, Professor Dr. McBee? I mean, now I'm thinking, I'm considering it now that I've heard it. Okay, okay, I've... okay. Now that you consider it, do you think you'd prefer it Dr. Professor or Professor Doctor? I like Professor Doctor of those two. But it's, it's still, it's so new to me. I've never heard this before, so... So is this a cassette tape? Yeah. He could be confused because it's the first time anyone's ever seen that technology. So that tape is similar to the kind of tape that holds the keys to the nuclear secrets. Okay. If you're Klaus Hergesheimer, then who is that? <laughs> Professor Dr. Metz is in a pickle. Arrest this man. We just saw this in the Steve Carell show that was on Netflix or Amazon or somewhere. Oh, Space Force? Yeah. Yeah. The Rural Mountain West doubling for space. Yeah. We, we watched that uh, re recently-ish. Not bad. So I think this is actually a reference to faked moon landings. Yeah. Which would have been fresh because, again, we're looking. This is like 71 we're watching. Yeah. So I think they're saying that they're warming up, but they're kind of like, hey, look, you could fake the moon. Yeah. You've heard the theory that it was Kubrick directing yeah. the fake moon landing? Yeah. So break that down for us. <laughs> this was, uh, if you want more details, I think the documentary Room 237 talks about this a bit. Like the theory is about like he faked the moon landing and then like hid clues to it in The Shining. Yeah. Uh, like the little boy's sweater, like has the Apollo or some, you know, shuttle on it, some rocket, uh, yeah. you know, space rocket. Yeah. And so the, the zenith of the idea, though, is that if you were going to be able to fake the moon landing, you'd have to get somebody as brilliant and as visionary as the director of, you know, Kubrick's films, right? Like. Yeah. And so that's why it's got to be Kubrick, right? Well, it's, you know, I don't believe the moon landing was fake, but like the, the concerns I have it, that, that doesn't sound great, but the concerns I have about it are the same concerns I have about say a Borat film where I'm just like, essentially the question I'm usually asking is like, who's filming this? So it's like when they, you know, blast off when the shuttle leaves the moon and the camera follows the shuttle up off the moon, it's plausible that they have, you know, remote control for the cameras, but still it's, it just makes me ask that question. Like, wait, who's getting this shot? This is one of the great chases for me is the sort of like moon ATV <laughs> versus the trike ATVs. Yeah. I, I like this a lot. This looks pretty fun. I guess <clears throat> back on the moon landing, uh, if Kubrick did fake the moon landing, what does Eyes Wide Shut tell us about that? Uh, just that I think the the moral of Eyes Wide Shut is women have options, so you should be appreciative. Well, how about this? Is the naval officer of whom Nicole Kidman so famously soliloquies? Is that naval officer perhaps one of the astronauts? <laughs> yeah, there's clues everywhere.
I, guess, I mean, may, if anything, I guess the recurring theme for Kubrick's films is, you know, you can't trust anybody. Definitely not robots. Well, I mean, I, well, I guess that's funny because they seem, if we're talking about AI, they seem like the most trustworthy in that film to me. Yeah, that's true. You make me want to watch, you, you ready to do a commentary on AI? I want to watch that again. AI? Boy, I don't know. That was a little longer, that's though. That's a Spielberg really, movie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Spielberg finishing it after Kubrick passes away. I got to say, I basically don't care for Spielberg. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like uh, Temple of Doom. I like Jaws. Do you like Jurassic Park? Jurassic Park. Park. Yeah. You know, there's definitely a few that I think are great. Although I want to say about Jurassic Park, I just, so yesterday I'm watching a review of RoboCop by Cinemassacre on YouTube. And he's mm -hmm. talking about, you know, in RoboCop, there's miniature effects because the Ed 209, you know, that big robot is like a miniature. <clears throat> but, you know, flash forward six years later, Jurassic Park, Steven Spielberg makes the choice. The same guy that did the RoboCop uh, stop motion stuff, he's doing like stop motion dinosaur stuff. And Spielberg's like, yeah, I think we're going to go with CGI. So it's like if you're into like practical effects and miniatures and that sort of thing, you can basically lay it at Spielberg's feet individually. Like he ended all that. Like the decision to go with CGI dinosaurs ended uh, the miniature effects, stop motion effects in Hollywood, in big mm. films. Mm. Interesting. I think that's a shame. I, I am a fan of practical effects. Uh, Robocop, by the way, famously shot at the famous IMP Dallas City Hall building. Oh, very cool. I'm also always down to do a commentary on Robocop because that's a five-star oh, yeah. film. Yeah, I think I'd much rather watch Robocop <laughs> than AI personally sure. i've watched both robocops before i'd watch ai again i think it would take AI is also as Haley Jail joel osmet yeah whatever his name is yeah yeah i've i tried to rewatch sixth sense in the last couple of years uh it's not for me <laughs> Haley joel osmet's not for me after entourage the movie i can never forgive that bastard are they going down fremont here Yes. Which we've been on this. We've been on this part of the off strip area before. Yeah. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. What do they call it? The North End or something? Yeah. Oh, the Fremont Street Experience. That's what it's called. Yeah. What am I saying? I like the it. Fremont Street Experience now is actually, uh, it's lost some of this. You remember the uh, the last time they did an MTV Real World in Vegas? Yes, and they were all just awful people. <laughs> but their their like climax uh, as roommates was to do like the uh, the Fremont Street where you like go down the zip line, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And they all talked about how it was a good time. I learned a lot about who I am as a person. I was like, no, you didn't. You're you're all awful. Nah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> this is very Blues Brothers yeah well this is great practical effects this is real fun car crashes you know? yeah, yeah. but again I guess to give credit this is before Blues Brothers this is like I, I'm right. watching this movie after things that came after it yeah uh, speaking of things that came after it <laughs> this was a huge deal for the Mustang for bond oh, yeah. Yeah. to drive the mustang in 71 yeah well you know bond he drives you know top of the line cars and so for bond to get that get behind the wheel of something that's a big deal for the brand mm -hmm. and the mustang you know even in 71 is still an emergent sports car mm -hmm. it's not yeah you, know, you, you see the way you shut that door you got to be careful with that you're going to catch your fingers in there Oof, those big heavy doors. 
this is one of the the all-time famous Bond moments right here, and you'll recognize it when you see it. <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> ah, I Bond. guess that's. Up on two wheels through the alley. Yeah, the I cops guess that's go, true. oh, I can do that. Nope. Again, I've seen that other places that I'm sure came after this scene. That's right. Yeah. This this is actually this movie's much more of a trendsetter than I assumed going into it. Yeah. This is good filmmaking. Even this shot through the fish tank, that's a really mm. interesting shot especially for this moment. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, it's so good. Do you just want to go out on top? I guess. But you also said they- I love he, this. Listen to this. Listen to this. <laughs> okay. He's thinking the so, same thing I am. So before- uh, this case was like, hey, listen, I I'm in some trouble here. I need you to talk to Felix about me. And Bond is like, oh, yeah, yeah, no worries. No worries. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. And so they're in bed, obviously, you know, and she's like, hey, you took care of it, right? He's like, well, no, you're going to jail for 20 years to life. Yeah. This guy, do I know this guy or does he just look like another famous actor that I do know? Felix Leiter. Oh, is that Felix Leiter? Yes. You've seen this actor and other stuff most recently I'm as looking the at... agent at the airport. Okay. <clears throat> so Willard White is basically like Steve Wynn. He's just a made up character, but he's like Steve Wynn, some kind of, you know, Vegas billionaire developer mogul type. Mm -hmm. This is an incredible scene. I love them bringing the theme back again to light strings. All right, so I, I had to look him up, but that guy that's not Dan Hedaya, do you know that actor? No, sorry, I was shaking my head. Okay. Uh, it, se it really seemed from, he seemed like Dan Hedaya. Who's Dan Hedaya? You would know, I think he's probably most famous for playing the dad in Clueless. Yep. Yeah, no, that's not Dan Hedaya. But you, you immediately have the face, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great that guy from the 90s. Isn't this how Emilio Estevez died? Almost. In Mission Impossible? Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's a sad scene. It's sad to let Emilio go so early in that film. Yeah, that was like... So when we were talking about Scream before, it was just like maybe a sign of the times. Like around that mid-90s, we would cast people and then kill them early in the movie as a shock. A la Drew. Yeah. Which we've only got two examples now. I wonder if I can think of more to identify it as a recurring theme. Does 006 as Ned Stark count? Oh, yeah. Sean Bean, sure. I only know him as 006. Uh -huh. <laughs> that fucking traitor. Usually, yeah. I mean, that's what he basically got typecast, right? Gadget. It's a fun gadget. I like this. This seems like a sketchy play, though, from Bond. Yeah, I don't know. What What is Sean Bean in? I don't really know what he's in. Mostly Lord of the Rings. Oh, I didn't know he was in those. Yeah, he plays like he's he gets he's one of many that gets corrupted by the ring and like turns traitor. Yeah. OK. Those are movies that I have not rewatched in some time. Yeah, they're about to come out on 4K. I'm curious to see what they do with it. Yeah.
you know, some people saw that and said, oh, man, this Legolas is going to be a star. Mm -hmm. I was actually like, oh, man, this actor Orlando Bloom was also Legolas. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't see star coming from that Legolas performance, I got to say. Yeah. Uh, who's the guy that everyone went crazy for? The dark brooding guy. Vigo Mortensen. Yeah, Vigo Mortensen. Well, you know, it was this whole operation was two decades ago. They all had their moment in the sun, but it ended 10 years ago. A History of Violence is a movie I'm not going back to. I just got to let you know right now. Oh, you didn't care for it? That's too dark. I'm, I'm not revisiting. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to rewatch a Requiem for a Dream either. You know, oh, I mean? definitely not. That one, that one just breaks my heart. How could you, how could you do that to poor Jennifer Connelly? Yeah. I was recently reminded of that. I was like, oh my God, that was Jennifer Connelly. Which uh, I just got a used copy of The Rocketeer on Blu-ray, which is one of her great performances. There was there was the this... first time I fell in love with Jennifer Conley. Yeah, it's probably true for many of us. I mean, I remember getting like the Pizza Hut promotional items for The Rocketeer, and like just having feelings, but not. Sh I didn't know what the feelings meant after seeing the movie. But Hollywood had. I mean, she's mom. I feel like there's a rocket ship in my body. <laughs> There's that, and then the other one, big one, is like Dark City, where she has like a club singing performance. It's just like they knew, like we just got to put her in like these sort of like uh, Art Deco, you know, like uh, sort of uh, not swing, but you know, twenties to forties sort of glamour performances. It just fits her so well. No, crazy. She was never a Bond girl. All right, so pay attention to this scene. This is an important scene. Uh-huh. So they, they set this up with the makeup at the beginning. Ah. Is that a, is this a justification for changing the actor too? Is like the makeup effects? I don't know, but the important part is that there's multiple Blofelds and they can take on the personality of others, even very famous others like Walter White, the Steve Wynn, Steve Wynn-esque billionaire mm -hmm. who runs the White House casino. So here, basically, the movie is coming together. Mm-hmm. I've been overusing that phrase a lot. I've noticed. Old storage. Been, no, just so to speak. I've been saying so to speak quite a bit. That's, you know, that's another word where it's always tempting to emphasize. Instead of saying missile. Missile? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Great acting from the cats. So early in the Bond franchise, Blofeld was only seen as like the petting of the cat. Right. And they, they use that Inspector Gadget, the cartoon.
You know, I would have said, take the L, Mr. Bond. Blofeld didn't know about the Fortnite jokes, you know? (laughs) I like that he pressed the button with his pinky. Yeah, I mean, I've taken to pressing most buttons with my elbow, again, because of current situations. Sure, yeah. Truly a terrible looking person. Mr. The, Kid is. Uh, the gait to his stride is like, I'm not sure if I'd say walrus like, but certainly it's reminiscent more of a beast than man. Yeah. More beast than man. <laughs> So a real showcase for GM automobiles in this thing. Mm-hmm. So is that just a... Uh photography trickery like it's a small thing up front closer to the camera nah it's a real hydraulic door (laughs) that's my only answer i don't know maybe i think it was just like someone holding it close to the camera like doing a lift All right, and again, we'll just leave him, and for sure he will, he's gone. The perfect plan. <laughs> Definitely dealt with. They even gave us some shade. It's like kind of an artsy shot. There's a couple of like really interesting artsy shots in this movie. Mm -hmm. And that was one of them. You know, like they're really going for some stuff with this cinematography. I like how often Bond wakes up in a tux. Mm -hmm. I never wake up in a tux. No. Well, I mean, the funniest version that I think is uh, Barney Stinson, like sleeping in the suit, but he sleeps in the bathtub so it doesn't wrinkle. Right. So this is obviously inconvenient. It reminds me of one of the the best design choices in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, where they go to hell and like all the hallways in hell are just slightly too short. So they have to squat walking through everything. Uh, That's hellish. Yeah, very hellish. (laughs) 
great looking Jeep. I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Just out walking my rat. Okay. Not the best <laughs> joke, but okay. Mm -hmm. Not the best. Do you think tie this either. Albert? No. Do you think this Albert Albert also goes by Cubby? I hope so. Mm -hmm. See, like when when I do my tie and it comes up short like that, I just I try again. Are you wearing a tie when you teach every day? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Good for you. Yeah, definitely from this angle, I can tell not Dan Hedaya. Is this Q actor, does he have the most appearances? In the Bond franchise? Yeah, I think so, actually. Because he goes all the way to Pierce. Yeah, and it's like consistent. He's in like all 20 up to Pierce. Oh, no. Uh-uh. I don't think so. He comes and goes? Yeah. He's, he's often appearing, but yeah, I don't think he's always there. That's very similar to Batman, where like Michael Go, I think, is the Alfred who's in the first four. Hmm. Wait, we're still in Nevada, right? This isn't the L.A. Fast and Furious house. Oh, but is it? <clears throat> it nah, seems it's similar. It's not, is it? No. No. Just some similar architectural features. Yeah. Those lights in the planter are fucking terrible, though. Look at those little lights. <laughs> They're so ugly. They really goofed with those. This is beautiful, though. Look at that. That's stylish, man. Mm -hmm. Dated now, but that is. Look at that scene. The indoor shag carpeting. It still works for me. I like Very it. Very modernist. Oh, okay. Bambi and Thumper. <laughs> Ooh. I gotta say, this woman's toes are kind of messed up. Sure. I don't know what's going on there, but she's got jacked up feet. <laughs> Those are kind of like a version of wrestling boots Bambi's got on. Mm-hmm. This is like early Xenia on a top. That's right. <laughs> 
Just a crazy see, look in their eyes. I see guys in the UFC do that all the time. Wow. I didn't know there was a pool down there. <laughs> was that a callback? <laughs> yeah. Wow, look at his hair. That is a seriously hairy chest with that shirt. <laughs> right? Yeah. Does being wet automatically imply having been, a, been in a fight with the female bodyguards? I don't know. I was thinking like maybe they were just trespassers and he hasn't been able to leave his own room for a month because they're up there. Okay, I will. That would have been a good quip for Bond. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> Stay away from this broad. Yeah, 20 years to life, baby. <laughs> Uh oh, there's that cat. See, I have the subtitles on. If I didn't, I would have heard Cat Lady. Look what the cab dragged in. Oh that doesn't God. make any sense. It gets more confusing by the second. Uh, are you meaning that you're feeling some things for Blofeld you hadn't heard when he was in different <laughs> attire and dress? No, it reminds me of Mrs. Doubtfire, though. Yeah, yeah. That I that was right on the money. Hard <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire's vibes. draw it for me so is this an impression of steve Wynn? i have no idea who what that person's actually like no 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 i just steve Wynn's like a vegas billionaire i'm saying it's a steve Wynn like character 
Walter mm-hmm. White is an invention, but he's just sort of like a Vegas billionaire guy. Yeah. Like if you're gonna be like, like, what is this character a send up of? Be like, oh, it's a guy like Steve Wynn. Yeah. But no, there's Steve Wynn wasn't even who he is today. If this were made today, no, oh, if this were made 10 years ago, those guys would have been Seth Rogen and James Franco. Oh, man. There's not a damn thing we can do about it. The missile silo, which you recognize from Goldeneye. Same one? Well, I mean, yeah, (laughs) basically. Sure. I mean, it's it's a Nintendo 64 version of that exact space. Mm Oh, okay. In terms of the reference there. Yeah, I was saying that like the Goldeneye game pulls from movies like across the entire franchise and so like i have a relationship with the level of the missile silo before i ever even saw the movie and then i was like oh shit that's the missile silo from goldeneye that's where it came you know what i mean and like there's a ton of that whether it's the moonraker laser the dam like there's just so many things that come from other movies that was a rough explosion graphic. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That, you know what? That explosion looked like stop motion. Yeah. Uh oh! Not the elevator. <laughs> That's a hell of a sectional, right? Mm -hmm. Huge three piece on a radius. Are we we in China now? We're in China, yeah. He just blew up China's nuclear missiles, I think. Okay. You know, he does better with U.S. locations than I would do with British locations. Fair enough. Although all the British locations are also U.S. locations. Okay. Norwalk, Greenwich. I mean, like, 
everywhere on the East Coast is just some other place that's also in Britain. Yeah. From Brighton to London. Yeah. From London to Scotland. <laughs> that's all I got. Man, Blofeld really put some miles on those shoes, huh? Mm-hmm. I really, I'm sad we moved away from this aesthetic for offices. With the couches and the wood panels. Yeah, the wood panel especially, it's, I find it very soothing. You got some wood panel behind you there. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all right here. I'm thinking like in my actual office on campus. Right. It'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be nice if it was essentially that. It's a little more sterile in this particular room. This is very metal. Yeah. Which, like, frankly, with a lot of computers, wouldn't all that metal hold a lot of heat? Wouldn't that be hard? You'd think. I would think. You're in the desert in a giant tin building. You really do have to admire just the number of different locations they're using. I'm telling you, this is when the budget got expanded. You know, they had the money now. The early ones are different, but now they've got dough. You know, I was thinking you can't be cool exiting from that object, but he, you know, he made the best attempt at it. I mean, that's really all you can do, right? Is make an attempt. Is that Miss Case just getting some sun in the background? Uh-huh. Yeah, this is her having joined Blofeld. Okay. Or so it seems. Right, yeah. Do you see the specter ring on his right hand? Oh, I do now. That's the specter symbol. Yeah, she's taking on sort of the behavior of a cat herself. <laughs> That's right. There's an iconic magazine cover of Lucille Ball that kind of reminds me of uh, Tiffany Case's hairstyling. Mm -hmm. So, I, again, with the underwear, I guess, was it like part of the appeal was, okay, you see a tiny bit of crack? I guess. I don't know. 
Like, I just feel like you need a better fit, you know? That's, <laughs> yeah, it's not appealing to me, but yeah, I guess so. A little small in every direction. Ouch. Shots fired. Shots fired at the Jayhawk State. <laughs> I still don't quite have the map down, but definitely after this week, I'm more familiar with like where the states are geographically. Yeah. I, I feel like I got it pretty okay. There's a version of, or a part of our country that I think of as the dirt south, which is like everything from like West Virginia, west to Missouri, including Oklahoma and Kansas. Mm -hmm. And that whole thing is just like all that, all those places where nothing happens. It's hard to know. <laughs> yeah, at least Oklahoma has such a unique shape that I can pick it out of a lineup. Well, it's above Texas, so that's easy. But yeah, Oklahoma, just like kind of a zero burger from from my perspective. Now, do we think that Blofeld had this outfit for Tiffany Case or Tiffany packed this somehow? <laughs> God. It's a good joke. Uh yeah, there's not I mean there's not too much to the outfit. She could have just been wearing it under the other outfit. I guess. Your problems are all behind you now. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you had to plan this out a little better. It's great. She swaps out the saving tape for the destroy the world tape. <laughs> I got to say, though, you know, it was really a failure to communicate on Bond's part. He yeah. said her problems are all behind her. He, uh, It's not clear. Yeah. What if the last shot was just the balloon drifting away and that was the end of the movie? Be like, wow, geez, that really didn't work out then, huh? <laughs> Very artistic. This is a good uh, cavalry shot, although yeah. not as good as I liked it in Goldeneye when they all just pop out of the yeah. grass. Well, this is the like Vietnam helicopters coming in, guns a blazing, you know? Yeah, it really makes you think that maybe the tape should have been playing right of the Valkyries. Yeah. Little Wagner. I mean, it seems we're we're making suggestions to improve the movie, but you know, this is we got a 50-year advantage on them. Yeah. It's a lot of context. It seems like getting missile down is going to be problematic for Miss Case and Bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe.
Michael Mann would say these gun sound effects need to be louder. Yeah. Good call. Yeah. Uh oh. Aww. Oh. Oh <laughs> That's pretty harsh. Nice shot. So this is interesting because I think the movie is basically moved into real time. There's 10 or so minutes left. Mm -hmm. They've got five minutes and counting. It's there's like, we're not going to blow up the helicopter. We can't afford that budget or not. We'll superimpose an explosion over the helicopter. Yeah. Luke Skywalker, is that you? Yeah. Uh, was this like the um, a Michael Bay movie where he gets the military to actually participate? I don't know. You know, because he always, they did it again. He's always like, you know, basically advertising for Oof. the American military, even in, in sure. like the Transformer movies. So like, yeah, take, use anything you want. All of our equipment is your equipment, Mr. Bay. <laughs> Professor Dr. Matt, settle down, bro. You're going to get shot. And, you know, we still need a minute at the end for some sort of like moment between him and Miss Case, I'm sure. One final sexual innuendo. Ooh, this is great. Look at this escape pod. Little submarine. It's got the AT&T call center headset. He's ready. Mm hmm. The actor was like, hey, you're not going to let me sink in that thing after we put it in the water, right? That would be awful. <laughs> no, but like for real, you guys have a plan to get me out of this little thing after the crane lets it go or oh what? Oh my God, it's probably not watertight either. Like You literally just drop it in there and it sinks and you, you drown inside. Been there, Bond. Sweetheart, you're not helping. <laughs> it's really, this is 
just madness. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what anybody's trying to do. <laughs> Are you? I'm confused on what everyone wants right now. Yeah. Well, I've been like that since the beginning. Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. That was... You did that to yourself. <laughs> All right, you did. Check. Is he going to say that Blofeld was hoisted on his own petard or... I don't really know. I just have to imagine that. Nice dive, James. Yeah. Roll credits. So that stopped the, what was it, a missile launch or something? A space laser? Yes, a space uh lasering of the nuclear warheads like that command is over <laughs> so walter white sent james and tiffany on a little cruise mm -hmm. Th those guys uh oh are Us. Well then. I'm sure that's actual the, the name of some dessert. It's very suspicious though. Hey. Would that be your impulse to cross your hands back and forth? No, I mean, no. Oof. Yeah, cake him. Kel surprise. Oh. 
Okay. I didn't see this coming. <laughs> Wonderful. Forget it. Wait, so the diamonds launched with the rocket? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's what I they got, needed the diamonds for. I got to admit. Wait, why? Is it fuel? No. The diamonds power the laser. <laughs> if, okay. All right. That makes sense. All right. So I enjoyed it. Another one. Another one down. I enjoyed it too. That was a good one. Diamonds are forever. And uh, so is Sean Connery's charm. Mm-hmm. So that will be the end of our live stream today, our commentary for Diamonds Are Forever. Thanks for joining us. If you liked it, make sure you smash like, subscribe. Let us know in the comments if there's any other films you want us to watch in the future you want to watch with us. And Jackie, any final comments? No, I don't have any final comments. I'm happy. All right. And we'll see everyone next time. Peace out. Hasta la vista. <laughs>